Okay, Bragg's Law says that the wavelength of the radiation, lambda, must equal 2 times d h k l. That's the interplanar spacing between two planes, given by the Miller indices h k l, multiplied by the sine of theta, right? So, how does this tell us what the crystal structure is? Here's how it works. When you generate these x-ray diffraction patterns, you're going to plot your intensity on the y-axis against your 2 theta. That's just convention. Basically, the light comes in at some angle theta and it exits at some angle theta, so they usually plot it against 2 times theta. That's just convention, right? And you observe peaks, like here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, and here's one. This is an example where you can count those peaks. These all occur at different two theta values, but the wavelength of your radiation over here is a constant. It's not changing. So if this is changing, right, the sine theta, that means that you must have different HKL, DHKL values, right? You must have different planes, interplanar spacings within your material. So if you have a polycrystal material and there's a bunch of different grains all oriented different ways, it must be that they have different DHKL values. Not all materials have the exact same inner planar spacing. Let me show you what I mean. If we come over here to Vesta, here I'm showing you the 311 plane in a face center cubic structure. And you can see I've drawn a whole bunch of planes. And you can actually see the spacing between them, right? We could actually calculate what this interplanar spacing is. If we did some geometry, we could calculate this distance, right? That distance will not be the same as the 111 plane. Here, again, this is the 111 planes. You can see them in pink there. The separation between them is a different separation, right? So again, as light came in using Bragg's Law, it's going to come in, it's going to bounce off, and it's going to travel some extra distance if it goes down to this other layer before it bounces off. And if that extra distance is an integer number of the wavelength, then we get reflection. So it's very specific conditions where we get um, reflection occurring. And it's going to be different for the... 001 plane, right? In the 001, there's our 001 planes, a whole bunch of them, and they, again, they are at different positions, and so it's a different interplanar spacing for these than for the 111 or the 311 and so forth. So essentially what we have here, when we measure x-ray diffraction, is that each one of these corresponds to a specific HKL value, right? HKL values are different for these, right? One of these might be, for example, the 111 plane, where a different one might be like the 311 plane, and so forth, right? I don't know what they are for this specific one, but that's the idea behind it. Okay? So, why is that helpful? Well, because we can relate with geometry, this interplanar spacing, DHKL over here, we can relate it to the crystal structure. Here's how you do it. We have a series of different formulas where you can calculate the interplanar spacing based off of the crystal system. Remember, there's seven different crystal systems, cubic, tetragonal, orthorhombic, monoclinic, hexagonal, triclinic, and trigonal. In this class, we're not going to do any of these really hard ones, so we're going to focus on these ones right here, these four. These ones are a lot easier to do. We won't do any of the harder ones in this class. In a later course on crystallography, those ones would be fair game. Let's look at cubic for a minute. It says that 1 over the separation between planes for some HKL plane, that separation squared is going to be equal to H squared plus K squared plus L squared, all divided by the lattice parameter squared. That's where the cubic, right? Cubic system. Okay? In other words, if we wanted to figure out the interplanar separation for the 311 plane, right, which we showed you over here, here's the 311 plane. If we wanted to figure out what that distance is, instead of trying to, you know, MacGyver the geometry yourself, which would be really hard, we can just use this formula. We can plug it in. So it's going to be equal to 1 over d for the 311 system squared will be equal to 3 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, all divided by a squared. So if you knew the lattice parameter for that system, you could plug it in for A, and once you know that, you could solve for the interplanar separation, right? Once you know the interplanar separation, you could say the wavelength is known, right? For copper, it's 1.54056 angstroms equals 2 times d hkl sine of theta, right? So you could calculate where you would expect to see the reflection at in terms of theta. You could say, aha, this must be the 
311 or whatever it is, you know, peak for this material, right? Based off of whether it matches the position of the theta that you measured with your experiment. So this is the concept behind x-ray diffraction. We're going to do a bunch of examples where we work this out and show you how to actually use it.